my review of the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge phone. I just bought it today. It's the 17th of May. This is the gold color edition. As you can see, that is not gold. That is more of a silver or platinum color. And I've already transferred over all of my data and information. So this is a review of the pros and cons of things that I've seen with it since then. One thing that I do like is the box. The box is very small, condensed, and until I am able to decide if I want to keep it or not, this box is very easy to store. It has the directions here. This is a box of the more detailed directions. And this is where the charger and the cord and the headphones go. But as you can see, it's very small, very nice, compact, easy to use. Um, one thing I do like are the headphones. These headphones have the little earbuds and the extra protected piece part here. But I've never seen earbuds like this with phones before. I've seen them without, with just a nub like that, but never the little piece that goes inside the ear. Um, these cost a little bit more to manufacture and make, and I like that, that they gave us a nicer one. Another one that I really, really like is the charger. Oops, didn't mean that. The charger is the exact same charger as other Samsungs. So if you have an old Samsung device, the charger will fit. And the cord is quite long. It's a couple of feet. It's like three to four feet. So the chargers are the same, which is very convenient, meaning you get extra chargers. Now, something else that I like is the old case that I have for my old phone, which is a Samsung Galaxy S Active 4. This one is the old case for it. And it's an old OtterBox type case with a little stand and everything. This is the hard plastic to protect it. This piece right here is the piece that I put the phone in. And basically, as you can see, the parts all line up. Um, there is a slight difference between where this is and where that is. So that might be a problem if you want to turn your phone on and off. But if you're just looking to protect your phone while you're carrying it, it's good if you don't plan on using it very much. But I'm going to put it in and show you that there is the camera and you see the camera works just fine but the part where the flash is is not it's covered up so this is why you need to buy a new cover now you're expected to buy a new cover every time you buy a new phone anyway so that's not a very bad thing but the fact that the old cover at least if you have an old cover you can use it temporarily but i would buy a new one because um that it gets very hot under the light flash and that's really bad. They call this the edge because the screen is curved. And if you see how the light signs off of it, it's a curved edge screen and it goes all the way around like that. Um, I haven't decided if I like that yet. So far it's nice and easy. It's very light, slick, easy to use, very easy to swipe like that um so i have had no issues with it so far when it comes to that now with the curved edge i have had an issue with the typing so i'm on google chrome and you see how right here they have the sim and the go if i'm holding my phone and typing like this like normal i'll hold it like that and i'll be typing and i am going to go to cheese.com And it will do it, but what will happen is, and I'm going to choose a different site. Sometimes as I'm typing, so I'm going to start typing G C H E E, and I'm going to stop there. If I accidentally hit go because of the way my hand is, then it can screw it up. Another issue is this here, where it, you change the different settings and it makes the different letters and whatnot and the, the code that that can get annoying if you keep bumping it i haven't gotten used to that i think that's a matter of using it so that you're not constantly tapping it 
but that is a negative um, on that. Now, for the transferring of all my information, this here, this app, if you have another Samsung device, then this is what you're going to do. You're going to click the Android device because Samsung is Android. You click on that and then you're going to choose if you're going to switch or transfer the data. Now, if you have an iOS, which is an iPhone device, it also works on that. But it's going to be called Smart, Smart, Smart Switch Mobile by Samsung. And you download it on both phones. And then all you have to do is place the phones next to each other as it is in the photo right here. You don't have to place them on top of each other. They can be right next to each other because it transfers data through the voice key area, which is going to be... Um, up here around there that area so it's going to transfer and wherever it is on the other phone so you just literally put the phone side by side and hit transfer and it transfers all of your contacts all your old texting all your old phone logs transfers all that information if your calendar and your phone um, here for the contacts is not through Google or cloud then it will transfer that as well now to update information I don't have it set for my location yet so I am going to do that and then basically it picks my area and I'm done so now on my phone it has my location um, one thing I do like is the easiness of the apps themselves and the old Samsungs, I could make folders and move the folders around fairly easy. But with this one, um, it took a little bit of time doing it, but with this one, it's a lot easier. Basically, I want to make a game app folder. So I'm going to put those two games together because I have too many pages. And I just want to narrow them down and type in the name games. Oops. Like that. Tap it. There. There's my folder. You can put up to 12 apps in it. Um, I haven't tried to put more, but you can make as many of these as you want and label them whatever you want. Now say I mislabeled it, which I actually did. I put a Z in instead of an S. So I want to get rid of this folder altogether. I just don't want to do that. I can remove the game completely up there at the top or just put it there and it automatically gets rid of it. That's a bonus. The old Samsung Phone 4 that I had did not allow that. It still kept the folder, and it kept that last app in that folder, which was annoying because if I didn't want the folder anymore because I didn't need it for whatever reason, it was annoying to get rid of. Another thing that I don't like about this new phone is I used to be able to swipe, swipe, swipe to the end of the page, and then when I kept swiping, it would go back to the first page. But as you see, it's not doing anything. So I'd have to physically go back, and that's annoying going back and forth, back and forth. When there's especially so many, there's eight pages here, and that's a lot. Um, I don't know if they have a limit on number of pages that you have, but this is how it is for me. One thing that I do like is as you, when you first install your phone, and you first transfer all of your data, one thing that happens is at the very end, a page comes up of all of your old apps from if you have an iPhone or if you have another Samsung device or another Android device. It has all the apps you've ever downloaded listed. So you don't have to repay for apps you've already paid for and you can go through and the ones that you commonly use are the ones that you don't use very much but you for whatever reason downloaded it a year or two ago. This is a way that you just download it. You do have to manually click on the app and then install it each individually but and that might take some time but you don't have to go through the app store and look everything up now with this particular phone another thing that I don't like let's go back all the way to see this is why I don't like it this here I do like how they have pre-installed Chrome Maps YouTube Facebook Snapchat they pre-installed these and um, this is an AT&T all the AT&T apps one thing that I found that they made with this phone versus the older version is that say I don't want my smart limits and the old phone it automatically did it I could there was no way I could go in and disable it but there was no way of me being able to take it off my phone completely 
I never use it. I don't have a teenager over to my phone. This is not a teenager's phone. This is my adult phone. So I don't need it. I'm going to take it off. This makes it so much easier to do that. You just take it and you dismantle it. If you want to take it out of apps, uninstalling it is possible, which is really nice. So, but they have all these pre-apps already installed here. And it, you just click and it's already there. You don't have to worry about it or anything. Now, another thing that I don't like is the price of this phone. Um, the problem is, is that this particular phone costs $850-ish, depending on where you get it and if it's on sale and that type of thing. Um, where I got it was $836, I believe. <coughs> The problem is, is that AT&T, well, it's not necessarily a problem, that AT&T is now doing the European style of phone management, which means that they are getting rid of their two-year contracts. You still have the option of a two-year contract. So if you really want to pay the two-year contract, you can. The contract base rates and prices based on the phone that you have and the different services that you have are slightly more with a two-year contract than if you were to pay for the services individually because what's happening is instead of paying and I'm just giving an example I don't know if these numbers are correct a $15 a month for unlimited texting or I can pay $10 a month unlimited texting for just the texting meaning I already have a phone I don't want a new phone I got a good phone I don't want a new one then I would just go to AT&T and say I want just unlimited texting on this phone they will apply it to that phone, their services for the texting, and I'd pay $10 versus the $15. Now, if I were on a two-year contract, I would pay the $15 because I'm not paying for the phone. It's my phone. I would own it, but I'm not making the monthly payments. Without the contract, I am making, instead of that $15 payment for the texting, I'm making a $10 payment for unlimited texting. But in addition to that, I'm also paying the monthly fee for my phone costs. What they've done is they've taken the cost of the total cost of the phone, which is the $800 I told you about earlier, and they divide it up by either 12, 20, 24, or 30 months. And within that time frame, I have they, the cost is completely divided, and I make that monthly payment as if it was part of my phone bill. So what ends up happening is I save five bucks on texting, I save 10 bucks on phone usage and data usage and things of that nature. So by the time everything's said and done, my total bill, maybe it started off with a two-year contract being $60 a month per phone. With this way, it ends up being closer to 40 bucks a month. But then I'm also padding in the cost of the phone itself, which is another 25 bucks a month. So it ends up costing 65. So I'm paying five extra dollars a month by not having the two-year contract, but I end up owning and being able to leave AT&T and going with Verizon anytime I want. I don't have to pay any contract fees for closing it or anything of that nature. So it's a pros and cons. Uh, this is the way they've been doing it in Europe for I don't know how long, but a long time. And that's what I think about this phone and the pros and cons of it. Uh, I hope that I've answered a lot of your questions and advice, and I thanks for watching.